I uh, went to film school not to be the guy that represented the people that made the movies. Okay, uh, that that wasn't my idea when I went to film school. Okay, um, so during my career as an agent, uh, as you might imagine, I was offered um, many oppor many opportunities on very big jobs at studios. Uh, some of my uh, clients uh, asked me to partner up with them. Um, uh, but the, for whatever reason, those situations, uh, either the timing or the auspices or whatever, were not right. So uh, I had achieved pretty much everything I felt I was going to achieve in the agency business. I mean, there's always another deal. There's always another movie. There's always new talent to get involved with um, to make it interesting. Uh, but what made me a very good agent was the reason I had to leave agenting because I really was a filmmaker working as an agent. Okay, so I wrestled with this issue for a long time, even though I was very successful. I still felt that I hadn't achieved what I wanted to achieve when I first came to Hollywood, which was to make movies, okay? Um, my son, who's a writer and went to NYU film school, my daughter also went to NYU film school. Um, he's very, uh, he was very gifted in uh, junior high and it, it's not something that, <laughs> that I would ever send somebody into that profession. They would have to do it on their own, you know? And then I started to think, I said, you know, wouldn't this be ironic that the father comes from, uh, you know, South Florida and, you know, goes to film school, comes to Hollywood and was a very successful agent. That would have been great. Would have been fabulous. Um, uh, and then his son is the one that actually made the movies. OK. And I didn't want my son to complete my journey. I needed to complete my journey, okay? And I actually, uh, it was very, very risky because I was at the top of my game and I could have coasted for the rest of my life as an agent and been very, very successful. Um, but I would have felt that I would have had regret that I never did it. Okay, and even if I went on stage, you know, I was always fifth row center or I was in the wings, all good. But even if I had to go on stage and just carry the spear, I needed to go on stage. Okay, I'm using it as a metaphor. And at this particular time was, let's say, CAA 2.0, the, uh, the uh, former chairman and president left, one went to Universal, one went to Disney. And at that moment, I really was taking a, a very serious look about if it's not now, it's never, and make peace with that. And the more I looked at it, the more I couldn't make peace with it. So I, um, Bob had produced some movies that, uh, that he didn't direct. And he had a lot of ideas and a lot of thoughts about a lot of uh, different projects. And you can only direct, you know, it's not like an actor where you can do two, three movies a year if you want to. Director, you're knocked out for years. You know, it's, uh, that's just the time, time constraints of that profession. And I felt that could take that brand and maximize 
those movies and sort of expand that brand beyond just his being able to direct one singular movie, okay? So I had, as I said earlier, that I had a lot of opportunities with a, a, several of my clients. And, um, you know, I may, I think I work with maybe three geniuses of, uh, yeah, three, Bob, John Hughes, and Terry Gilliam, okay? And then going right up there, I had many others that were right on that edge of genius, okay? Many of them, Harold Ramis, I mean, uh, Michael Mann, Chris Columbus, there's uh, Ron Howard, Brian Grazer, Jerry Bruckheimer, Don Simpson. I had a lot of phenomenally talented clients, okay? Uh, phenomenal writers that I work with, Scott Frank, Steve Clovis, Bo Goldman, Robert Kamen, Ezra Sachs, Meadow Mayes. Um, and I'm, I'm not gonna go through the whole list here uh, at, the, at the moment. Um, so, um, I felt that Bob, I had seen Bob function in a very, you know, when everything's great, everybody really puts on, it's easy to be their best version of themselves. When things are not so good and people are the best versions of themselves, that talks to it very deeply about your character. And he always, no matter how dark, no matter what the situation, no matter how complicated, always did the right thing. Okay, always did the right thing, had honor, had integrity, not to suggest that my other clients didn't, I'm not saying that, okay, um, I am just simply saying that his view of the world about how one deals with people was very aligned with mine, okay, and, um, and, uh, you know, I signed him when he was in movie jail and I, nobody wanted to hire him. And then we got Romancing the Stone because Michael Douglas liked Bob and then Bob was able to do Back to the Future and then the rest is history. Um, so we were forged, uh, you know, in the same way coming up that way too, okay? Uh, so it, it made a lot of sense. So I, he was just coming off of contact and I had a conversation with him and I said, you know, what about this? What do you think about this? And he said, I think it's great. And that's how it happened. 